Hello class, here we are in the conference room still. The way things are looking, we'll be in the conference room for a while longer. Uh, coronavirus has had taken an uptick. Governor Abbott will be uh, speaking to the state. So we will continue keeping on, keeping on. Today the lesson is resist the devil. You know, I have people asking me here lately, what is going on? We got the coronavirus, we got riots in the street, we got earthquakes, we got statues coming down. It's just a mess. Has God given up on America? Well, the answer is no, God hasn't given up on America. You know, I had a missionary friend of mine. I was in China on a tough trip with him one time, and things weren't going too good one day, and I was kind of in the dumps. And he looked over at me and he said, what's wrong, Ron? Are your Cheerios not crispy today? I looked at him, we were in a car, it was hot, we were stuck in traffic. And he said, remember this, this isn't heaven yet. So that was good uh, advice for me that day. It kind of encouraged me that uh, he's right, this isn't heaven, it's kind of tough times down here. And so uh, the devil is having a heyday in America, that's quite clear. But there are things that we can do to offset that as the church. God hasn't given up on America. The question is, has America given up on God? Now, there's some things that we need to remember of what's going on down here. Now, the first thing is in John chapter 10, verse 10, John 10, 10 says this, the thief's purpose is not to kill, is, is to kill, steal, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. In other words, Jesus is saying the thief, the devil, Satan's job is to steal, kill, and destroy you. His job, Jesus, is to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. And it also says in 1 Peter if you turn over to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5, 8, and 9, it says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Let's not be so naive to think in America that we got it so tough because you know some missionaries that we support, they've been in our Sunday school class before, and they're living overseas and they have it a whole lot tougher than we have it each and every day. So let's not have a pity party about what we're going through in America right now because these missionaries have been going through this for most of their lives. They've been fighting the good fight. And quite honestly, it's time for the church to wake up, smell the coffee. We need to come off the sidelines and we need to get into the game. America needs the church to get into the game. We live in a fallen world. That happened in the Garden of Eden. It's not going to get any better until Jesus comes back. Matter of fact, if you read your Bible and we took you through Revelation, it's going to get a lot worse. These are end time days and the devil is having a heyday out there. And it's time for the church to get back into the battle. Uh, the, the Bible gives us instructions on how we're supposed to do that. If we go to James, let's go to James Chapter uh, 4, 7. This is good advice for us that it gives us in James. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So if we're having trouble with the devil, it says resist the devil and then he will flee from you. We don't have to fall into his trap. We don't have to fall into his lies and be deceived as the church. We know better than that. We resist the devil and everything that he stands for, and the word says that he will have to flee from us. Also in Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18, it says this, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 
Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be still standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. You see, we know how to fight. We know how to resist the devil. It's just doing it is what we need to do. You know, if we want to win America back, then we have to as the church. And who's the church? It's us. It's the people. We have to read our study guide. We have to read our love letter. And quite honestly, we got to stand up and say, Coach, put us in the game. you you got to ask God, God, I'm ready. God, prepare me. God, restore me and then put me back in the game. You know, I've I've been in battle with some uh, good uh, fellow Christian soldiers for some years now. And you know, in war, uh, you have some tough times. There are some difficult times, but there's also some joyous times of, of great friendship that is made when you're in that battle. And so uh, I have made great friendships in this uh, of battle, uh, fighting this, this good fight. And you will too. But it's time to stand up and say, Coach, put me back in the game. You might have been out of the fight for a while. That's okay. Rest up. But it's time for you to get back into the fight. This is important. Uh, Christians don't need to be sitting on the sidelines watching what's happening in America today. We need to stand up. We need to be heard. And it needs to be done in the proper manner. So if we're going to do this properly, if we're going to fight the good fight, then here's the last word that we need so that we can win this battle. And that's found in John 13. John 13, if you'll turn over to John. John 13, 34 through 35. Now listen to this. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. It's going to be more than just going into the fight and being ready to fight. It's going to be more than just resisting the devil. It's going to be more than just putting on the full armor of God. We have to go out in love. What you see on the TV and what you're reading in the newspapers and what you're seeing on the internet, that's not love. That is hate. That is anger. And we as the church must not go into that. That is going to be playing the devil's game. We are better than that. And we must follow Lord Jesus' command that we love one another. That way the world will see us as disciples. And then they will listen to what we have to say. We've got the message of hope. We've got the good news. And we know what's at the end of this book. The devil loses. The devil loses. But we must keep up the good fight until our Lord Jesus Christ comes back. So my word to you today in this teaching, put a smile on your face. It's bad, but it's not that bad. You still got breath in your body. You've still got hope in Jesus Christ. And you still have a God that loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for you on the cross. And you still got the word of God to go to each and every day. You can still pray to a God that hears you 
and and listens to you and answers your prayers. It's bad, but it's not hopeless. And we still have the church. The church still stands. We're not persecuted yet in America like other countries. So we still have it easier than other countries and other missionaries. So let's get off our pity pot. Let's quit watching so much internet and TV and start doing something about it. And that is going out and loving on people that sometimes are unlovable and win them back. So today, let's pray that we be back in the fight as the church in these tough times and that we see glorious times ahead of us. So until I see you uh, 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 in the church, in the Sunday school class, have a great day. Get back in the fight, resist the enemy, put on the full armor of God, and let's go back. And this is a war for souls. The devil wants them into hell. God wants them into heaven. And we are the eyes, hands, and feet of Jesus Christ. So today we arise as the church. Today we go back into the fight. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for uh, this time in history, Father God, that you call upon the church to rise up. Father God, you call upon your people to rise up. Father God, to resist the devil. Father God, to put on your uh, armor. And Father God, to walk out with love so that they know that we are your disciples. Father God, we pray that you take care of this coronavirus. This coronavirus is straight from the devil, Father God, splitting up uh, families from loved ones, Father God, not letting people come into the church, not letting us form as a Sunday school group and be together. Father God, we pray against that, Father God, and we pray that you remove it from our midst. Father God, we pray against these riots and all this hatred and anger, Father God. We pray a calm and a peace come over our country, Father God, and only you can do that. And Father God, that we rise up and we stand against that hate and that anger, Father God, in love. And Father God, we pray, Father God, for souls that, that don't know you, Father God, to hear the good news and to come into the kingdom of heaven. And Father God, today we pray for all good things to happen. And Father God, we thank you for what you do. And Father God, we thank you for what you are about to do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Until later on down the road, you stay safe and healthy and have a great day.